So um, here we are going to start talking about how to do the statistical analysis um, while completing this particular worksheet. This worksheet that as you see in the screen is available also on Blackboard, right? And it is, it is the same worksheet that appears on page 18 of your lab manual. Now, I want to, I'm encouraging you to use the lab um, worksheet that I have uploaded to Blackboard because A, it's electronic, right? And I have kind of readjusted it um, to make the lab activity easier to follow through, right? So go by that one. And now, if you read this question, it asks you to um, randomly sample three grid cells. You don't have to do that because we have already collected data for you. The, the previous video ended uh, by me showing you three potential, uh, four sets of data, right? And right over here, what you're looking at is um, a table I made out of those four data points, right? So um, we have three rows, uh, three columns representing the three samples for the two species. Now we are going to use Excel to calculate the total mean and standard deviation as well as a 95% confident interval, right? Right over here on the top, right, you can see there's a particular symbol uh, like over there, right? You, when you click that, right, it actually opens up this particular window, right? First thing we want to do is actually take a look at the total. First, put your cursor and highlight this cell by selecting the, the first column, this particular column, this particular cell that you want to calculate the total for all lentils based on the all four samples. So again, you go back over there, click that particular um, icon right and then this window opens up right and you wanted the total so that's actually this particular sum right and you click sum right and then it appears over there another easier way to do that is actually right um right if i go back over there just bring my cursor to this particular bar right put equals and type sum right that's actually much easier right and then it actually you know populates automatically um, certain functions and then you double click on that particular function right and then it asks you to populate the range right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these particular ranges right the first three um, data columns and then I'm going to close the parentheses right and then over here you can see this check button then I'm going to check that right so then I'm going to have the total number of uh, total count based on the th both, all three samples in order to populate the total for beans I can do two things one I can drag this right if I go back can you see this over here there's a tiny little box over here right so I'm going to drag and drop that over here right and it automatically populates the bean um, another way is actually you can just to practice yourself bring the cursor bring the cell highlight that particular cell go to this particular bar hit equals type sum select that sum option select the range of data you want to calculate the sum for close the parentheses right and hit that check button right and you get the same number and now I want to calculate the mean how do I do that the same way check the formula button right um, or oh, rather than doing that hit equals I want to calculate the mean right so I'm going to look for average right and I can keep typing average or I can select the option average over here double click that and then it it opens up a parenthesis automatically and now I'm going to give it the range when I, when I'm giving the range make sure you are only selecting the first three cells right because that's the data range you are interested in right and then you close the parenthesis um, hit the enter or check the the tick button right and you have the mean and remember how do you populate the same for bean either like re-enter the formula don't forget the equal sign don't and then you type average that comes in and then you select these three um, the first three cells close the parentheses either hit enter or return if you are using a Mac and then or hit this check button right there you go you have the mean right well, how about standard deviation? It's pretty much the same, right? Equals. Um, now we are looking for standard deviation, right? S T D standard deviation, right? And I'm going to uh, 
There are several options right now over here. There's something called standard deviation P, standard deviation S. Um, for this exercise, it doesn't matter. If you don't like either of them, you can just go by S, T, D, um, E, V, and then just uh, select the range, right? Um, that's what I'm doing, like S, T, D, E, V, right? And then just select the range of data that you are interested in, close the parentheses, right? And hit the checkbox. Yeah, there you go. That is your standard deviation. Well, do the calculations for the standard deviation now for the beans. Equals S T D E V. Right. And open parentheses. Select the range. Close the parentheses. Hit the checkbox. There you go. You have the two standard deviations. Now, how do I calculate 95% confident interval? Um same thing right equals right start typing confident right um, and you can see automatically the uh, this particular option pops up right over here confidence right or you can actually continue typing confidence whichever you like I mean not, there's nothing wrong with either of those options Right, and also in the um, the textbook, right? It actually um, either tells you to use the term confidence uh, T or a standard de for standard deviation, standard deviation S. Um, using either of those options are fine, right? I mean, I just to make it uh, clearer, uh, let me redo the uh, standard deviation, right? Rather than going for standard deviation, I'm going for sample standard deviation, right? So ST. DEVS, this particular option, right? I select that particular option. Up, oh, didn't work. STDEV. Um, I will that particular option. It opens the parentheses automatically, asking me to select the range. And I close it and hit this particular check button. Ta da! Let's do it again. Equals STDEVS, standard deviation for the sample. Right, open parenthesis, select the range, right, close parenthesis, ta-da, right, and you can actually go back and check whether you have it correctly selected, right, for the lentils, I am looking at the lentils, lentils range, sample standard deviation, over here, for the beans, I am looking at sample standard deviation for beans, yeah, my range is correct, good, my value is accurate, now I want to calculate confident interval, so I am actually going to follow to avoid confusion let me follow the example given in the textbook by the way the actual um, the the code or the script for all of these statistical calculations are given in your lab manual um, if you look at page 14 it tells you how to calculate some page 15 tells you what to type to calculate average um, and then if you look at page uh, 16, you will see what to type to get um, standard deviation and confident interval. So from between page um, 14 to 16, it actually gives you what, what to type, right? So I'm kind of helping you out through a dem live demonstration over here, right? So confident intervals, what do I type? I keep typing confidence, right? Equals confidence right confidence t is what i select and then first i want to select i mean if you when you are at this particular area it tells you for confidence t you need first alpha remember what alpha is our alpha was 0 0.05 which is 100 minus the confident interval right remember our preferred confident interval was 95 100 minus 95 is 5 percent 5 percent as a decimal fraction is 0 0.05 that's my alpha. Then it asks for standard deviation. Well, I calculated the standard deviation. So rather than typing that value, I'm just going to select that particular cell with my cursor. And then I put a comma, right? Don't forget those commas in between. Size, sample size. Your sample size is what? One, two, three. You collected three samples, or rather we collected three samples. I put that number three over there. I, my, I close my parentheses, and then I hit this checkbox, right? Voila. And again, I want to calculate the confident interval 
for the other species. I do the same equals confident. I type, I partly type starting confident and it automatically pops several options. I double click on confident T, opens up a parenthesis, conf, uh, alpha 0.05, standard deviation. I will select this particular value of the corresponding standard deviation, put a comma, and the size, sample size is still three, close parenthesis, hit the checkbox. Voila, right? You have um, the standard deviation for your beans. Now, you can actually uh, see, if, if you ch look closely, um, right, here it actually comes with a negative sign, right? The problem is because I accidentally hit a negative sign over here, right? Uh, let me redo it for you, right? Um, delete that. For beans, confident interval equals confidence, right? This one confident T it opens up. Um, the point of five for alpha, comma, standard deviation. I will select this particular cell. Have sample size is three. Mm. And hit the checkbox. There you go. I have my confident int range for lentils and beans. Now remember, this is actually the number plot that you have to um, either add or subtract, right, from the mean, right? That this is actually, um, this is kind of the you know how much um, for lentils you have to add or subtract that that value um, from lentils mean and for the beans mean. Okay, okay. Um, now that is done. In order to answer your first question in the worksheet, you need to copy and paste this table, right? So, um, what I'm going to do is actually I want to make it just a little bit prettier, like looks better. So I'm going to format this particular table as a table. So I go to, um, this particular view. I'm just trying to get this data in, um, I'm going to um, this particular panel, it says home, and then right over there, I'm trying to add all the borders, so it kind of looks prettier. Then I select all of those ranges, copy it. Then I go to my data sheet right over there. Uh, nope, not over there. Here, right, and then bring my cursor over there and paste it, just like that. There you go, right? If you want to reformat it, like what you do is you can just um, select this particular, the double, ar double four-headed arrow thing, right? And then go to table design, right? And actually you can uh, make it or reformat in different ways. Just keep a simple format like that one. I like it, right? That's why I selected this particular first option. Um, now remember guys, right? A table should have a label, okay? Uh, a caption. I'm going to call it table one because it's my first table. Then I'm going to describe what I'm looking at over here. I am looking at um, two species of beans and I'm looking at their mean standard deviation confident interval. So I am going to come up with a caption like this, right? Average sample size um standard deviation right and 95% uh uh 95% confident intervals for lentils and beans right now i'm lazy i'm just not typing a meaningful um caption over here but when you do it don't do see I mentioned confident intervals like don't do unnecessary acronyms right so type the full name over there right and of course you could actually make the table caption as meaningful as possible right you can add based on three samples right so make it as meaningful as possible right um and but well, that's it right that's actually answers the first question let's navigate to the Question number two now, um, right? I might just want to check, make sure everything is right. Yeah, everything is right. And then, oh, another thing is actually, look at the 95% confident interval, look at the mean. I'm not interested in this many um, um, decimal points, right? I'm going to round it up to this level, right? 
Uh, over here too, I am going to round it up to that particular level. Same over here. Uh, this is way too much. Not interested. Rounding it up, right? Here, rounding it up. Now, I am rounding it up manually over there, right? But if you go over here, you can actually also round it up in the same way. What I would do is, for that particular one, I will select um, these columns, right? Because that's where um, I have decimal points. Then navigate to under the home tab, you can actually select this particular decrease decimal option, right? And I will right keep hitting until I have the desired number of decimal points. That looks good to me. Then I copy the entire table, right? Rather than copying as it is, I'm going to say copy, right? Like that, because otherwise it actually um, provides like unnecessary formatting, right? Uh, and then paste it right uh, over here on the bottom right as values right now that actually you know correctly copies you know everything without um, the unnecessary decimal points you can now copy this you know newly formatted one um, go to your work excel worksheet and paste it Right, and again, see, like now I didn't format it properly, so I have to select this particular, you know, four headed arrow, go to table design, and select that particular option. So now you have a nice table, right? Uh, you can actually add another caption over there, table one, blah 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 blah, right? Now, this is not a figure, it's a table, right? And table caption should appear on the top of the table. All right, that's actually a quick, quick demonstration with some additional information about better formatting, right? Now let me delete that. Let's look at question number two. Uh, based on the three samples, estimate the total population size of the two species, right? Enter the data in the table, okay? Now let's go back to my numbers. Over here, right? I don't need this one. I just copied, the, I pasted it for like, to answer the worksheet. So, my average, right, is actually, you know, um, is about 48 uh, beans for lentils, about 31 beans for, uh, 31 for beans, right? So, now remember we had three samples, right? So, this particular average corresponds to a single sample, right? How do you calculate the total population size. Remember how many grids were there in that entire tray? There were 12. So in order to extrapolate this sample mean to the entire population, you multiply by the number of sampling units, right? So one had 48 on average for the entire population multiplied by 12. So multiply 48.67 by 12 to get the entire population. Multiply 31.3 by 12 to get uh, the bean population. So that's what you are going to do over here, right? Over here, what you are going to do is um, I had about 48.67 um, beans, right? And on average, well, how many are there in 12, right? And or rather, I can actually put this over here, right? Over there, right? And then the same over here, right? On average, per single grid, that many, right? And extrapolate into the entire population, that number, right? So, uh, so you can actually um, calculate this with a calculator, right, or whatnot, and then uh, calculate the total population sizes. Um, and then, Let's look at question number three. So question number three, based solely on your answer to number two, can you draw any conclusions about whether one species on average more abundant than the other? Um, well, you can, right? When you do the math, you're going to figure out that there's going to be more lentils than beans, okay? Um, so you can tell, right? Yes, you can. You know, it is possible to say that you know the, the the extrapolation of the total population reveals that there are more speckled pinto beans than green lentils. Now the problem is, but can you? Is that a reliable uh, extrapolation? Is a question because um, you are 
doing the extrapolation solely based on average and we learned earlier that average may not be itself average along itself is not very reliable right because um to these two samples you know lentil sample uh, and the bean sample right may actually have the, the three samples we collected for each species might actually have differential spreads because of the differential spreads you actually your, your average itself may not be a good representation of the actual population size right so you can actually use um, that knowledge I explained earlier to answer why this extrapolation just based on average and discounting for the actual data spread is a uh, unreliable measurement okay that actually answers question number three question number four right see like the early explanations I did helps now to answer these questions now remember when you are filling the uh, completing this uh, worksheet I want your answers to be very comprehensive and complete right that's why I spent so much time explaining all the basic theories so do a good job do be thorough when you're providing answers and be, be de detailed when you're providing your answer that's a good reason why I spend so much time explaining everything to you right don't be uh, don't do a quick and dirty job that's not how I what I expect right number four um now so now the next question compare your estimates right from uh, previous answer with the the other data sets right so it refers to uh, with um, from number two with those of the other teams in your lab section and um, enter the data in the table but since actually we are not um, really working as a team over here this part is quite difficult for you to do but I want you to um, I do want you to think over here just you know sit for a moment and think right if you look back at the 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 different team data I provided to you right over here right look at these numbers right um now these numbers like I'm mean, with this these are actual numbers we came up with when we actually collected the data right you know clearly they are not going to result in the same uh, population estimations right if you average these numbers right and then multiplied by 12 um, the numbers for lentils and numbers numbers for beans will never be the same right I mean if you don't believe me just plug in those different numbers into the Excel sheet you just created over here right and see what numbers you get that those are not going to be the same right and, and and now what I want you to think is actually you know in the answering question number 4a how similar are these estimates in the fear in the lentils and are these estimates dramatically different from the others explain your answer so you know uh, it's it's hard to compare because you are not actually getting data from other students right and um and the and for lentils and red beans the chances are those numbers are going to be quite different right so what I want you to think is provided that you know like just by glancing over the sample data you know those numbers are not going to be the same even if you don't have actual population estimations you know they are not going to be the same right so what I want you to do is you know I want you to answer like what could be creating the difference so although you're not actually you don't have the numbers for um, from other teams since I'm not going to ask you to calculate means for other uh, data sets but I'm going to ask you to explain me if you were to encounter differences exp you should be able to explain why these estimations are different right so this again relates to the fact that you know several several things I explained to you regarding sampling error right um, a we only sampled 25 percent of the population to calculate the average and we know that average is a biased statistic right it is not representative it may not indicate the overall behavior of the data set so that that's one problem right we are based our extrapolations on um, mean that is not an ideal candidate um, as a statistic right two small sample size right just three samples right out of 12 possible samples 20 just you know 25 percent of the entire population that sample size could have been inadequate right um so think about uh, other than that like why would um, you get very different sample sizes right as you can observe over here right um 
why would you know a different sampling events you know based on the semi very similar community will result in different answers right think about how sampling error can be magnified over here right it's kind of a good thinking moment right so so basically rather than answering a for a for b uh, i just answer for c what might cause the differences in these population estimates right that's what i uh, that's the only part i expect you to answer in this case right because I, i'm telling you those numbers are going to be different and you can see it in the data set Now let's look at question number five, right? Producing graph. Produce a bar graph, column graph in Excel terminology to illustrate the average abundance of the two bean species. Be sure to include title, access labels, and error bars. Import the graph here, meaning copy and paste the graph uh, to this Excel sheet, uh, to, to this uh, Word document, the worksheet. Right click on the uh, graph after you have imported it. And select insert caption write a figure number and a caption that describes what the graph represents yeah so that's actually is about um, captioning it we will do all of that so first let's go back to our Excel sheet let's look at our data so we want to plot this particular mean as bar graph for lentils and beans and then we we want to use this confident intervals to show error bars that's what the bottom line is how are we going to do that well um I'm going to start with first uh, I, I want to plot mean, so I'm going to actually um, select that uh, entire column, and then I'm going to go insert, right, and column, right. So, like if you hover around this, it says insert column or bar chart. So I need that, right, and I am going to go for this uh, the very first option, and it actually drops in this um, this particular graph over here, right, and um, now what I'm going to do is actually this still requires formatting, right? I don't like so many things about it, right? If you look at that, um, it's kind of stupid, right? It actually says one and two instead of lentils and beans. I don't like that, right? Well, luckily it actually correctly shows my um, values on y-axis, but I, so there are lots of formatting to do here, right? So let's start doing formatting over here, right? So what I'm going to do is I will right click here, right? and go to select data option right remember where I'm clicking is very careful where you click actually you know has a lot to do with what what is showing up right so I want to format my X axis I select my X axis and right click at the X axis and go to select data because I want to change this one and two right over here right to I um, this one and two into lentils and beans. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to hit edit over here. Okay. And now it tells me axis label range. Tell me, you know, like what axis range to insert, right? So I'm going to tell like, yeah, this is what I need, right? And right, see what happened. It actually correctly included those two. Voila, right? What did I did? Right click, select data click edit on this horizontal portion right and delete whatever they are by default select the correct range right and it is actually lentils and beans right you don't have to select beans uh, the species no just these two right and then hit ok right and hit ok there you go so that's done um what other problems i have mm. I would like to have an actual solid line on my y-axis as well as on x-axis. So again, what I'm going to do is now right click, format axis, right? And then over here, go to, go to format option, right? And you need, um, you're looking for the line, right? and you actually need a solid line and you want in black color right see what happens over there well do the same thing select y-axis right right and then again go to format axis the format axis bias all over there navigate over to this particular paint bucket which says fill and line click it i need a solid line and i want it in black color see what happens great right 
and there are many cool stuff you can do right I mean if let's say you don't uh, like grid lines right? you can even get rid of the grid lines right um, plot format area and then there are options to get rid of uh, like over here if you click right see you can actually get rid of um, the grid lines over there it's even easier right and then another way is if you click this chart element right and go to grid lines and say you know um, you can actually like cl click off horizontal grid lines if you don't want that right but if you think it's actually easy to read it I think it's easy to read when you have some grid lines so it's okay to leave it over there like that and it's much more grayer um, color so it's not actually making anything aesthetically unpleasant if you don't like it anyways you can just remove it if you like it just select uh, those horizontal lines um, and I also don't like uh, we don't put captions on the top for figures we have to put them on the bottom so I am deleting that default caption right just by hitting the delete button um, I'm not still complete right I need to label my y-axis and x-axis so um, what I'm going to do is select the graph right go to chart design and then chart element right I want an axis title well primary horizontal axis right. when you select primary horizontal axis that text box appears I want to call this um, species yeah that's good enough right and I also want to call this one what um, average abundance so I select that particular axis right uh, and then go to chart design ax uh, elements and then I'm going to go to this right uh, what what is this axis titles primary vertical right there you go to actually um, since I clicked it twice it actually kind of messed it, messed it up um, I'm going to kind of create more space for that I'm going back again add chart element axis titles um, primary vertical there you go right there you go so just you might need to learn about like how to like drag and drop certain things but that's not very difficult what what I'm going to call it relative abundance no I'm lazy I'm just typing like something like that you are not lazy so I want you to actually type the full term or their relative abundance right um yep that's it huh yeah good enough for me right and there's nothing else for me to think about at this stage so I'm happy right so what I'm going to do is I need to copy this right I actually need to copy this with high resolution with good resolution right and because of that I'm actually going to you know to copy this I'm going to um, go to like home tab over here right copy right and I am going to say copy as a picture right and I'm going to select as shown on the screen or as printed it doesn't really matter right what you select doesn't really matter with uh, whether you select as a screen uh, screen resolution or the print resolution always copy it as a picture not as a bitmap bitmaps might not work in certain cases because of the high resolution it could kind of be a burden now go back to your word document which actually has the worksheet and paste it voila right now you actually have this you know beautifully right and you can resize it drag and drop it you know as way you like right so if you just copy it right as it is right and paste it um, over here what you're pasting it is as a graph itself right so that will actually be it could do funky things when you try to resize it right but um, if you copy it as a picture it actually gives you the least trouble right it will keep the resolution and everything as it is so um, that's why I wanted you to do it so right if not when you paste it right over here if you copy it as is when you paste it paste it as a picture right like this right in which case actually you know um, you will have a we, we will preserve the resolution and it will not get disoriented alrighty um, st still we are not done we need to add a figure right so figure this is my first figure I'm going to call it figure one and I'm going to share I want to give it a meaningful figure I'm not typing it I want you to think about a good figure I'll ex help you out think about what we are showing over here we're looking at two species lentils and beans and then not just lentils any lentils and, and beans green lentils and speckled pinto beans right so 
relative abundance of green lentils and speckled pinto beans in the 15 bean community right and you can make, make it more meaningful right based on you can say come up based on three samples right um so like that always make this as meaningful as possible now i actually intentionally you know forgot to do something right remember like if you read back this it asks you to include error bars i didn't include error bars let's go back and add error bars how do we do that right go and select the the actual um the graph bars you know by clicking on them right and then go to chart design and then go to chart elements right think about it this is very intuitive you are going to add more elements to the chart so you have to change the design so chart design chart elements and go to error bars right don't go to any of these default right no we want to customize so we are going to go and select more error bar options do not go for the custom error bars right and then um once it once it does it opens up this particular um window on the side right sometimes it could actually float on the middle or it will dock on the side and now what you do is you need to go to this the last option which says error bar options click that one right and you want to actually customize it right make sure it's you're selecting this both option over there with caps and custom you click custom and then hit specify values now what you're going to do is you have to specifically tell what values you want to be considered as positive error bars and negative error bars error bars goes up and down that's why there's a positive error bar and a negative error bar okay i want for both lentils and beans right these values right right so i'm going to select both of those ranges right for positive error bars delete whatever by there by default and select the same ranges for negative error bars right there you go you have it right now you have error bars right aha now now you can copy this copy as a picture i'm fine with that and delete this old one and put this back over there right now you can also say what the error bars indicate now you can type error bars indicate 95 percent confident interval now you can see that my error bars have the similar sizes that's because actually my actual confident intervals are not that different they are very close right but um if you were to select a different data set you will have different values right so don't panic right if that happens that that's completely okay and i do encourage you to select other data sets right so you will be learning something by doing some uh, using a different data set right do not use my own data set okay use something else right there are four data sets in this figure right i use the d you have a b c to choose from okay let's move forward now to the other parts right so I have a caption over there number six compare mean abundance between the two species of beans right so how do you do that you have to look if the 95 percent confident intervals between lentils and beans overlap does it overlap ah yeah it does quite a bit in fact right right over here it overlaps so yes the 95 percent confident intervals for the two species do overlap and it overlaps pretty extensively right um, at least 50% of the confident intervals overlap with each other, at least in my case, right? Um, now, if you go over here, B, based on the results for 6A, can you conclude that there is a significant differences in abundance between the two species? If so, which species is more abundant? Well, let's go back at my graph. Take a look at that graph over here, right? Yes, they overlap, right? So because of that, um, I, I have no evidence to suggest that there's a, conf a significant difference between 
um, the relative abundance of those two species, right? Um, they are more or less uh, comparable, they are more or less similar. So there is no significant difference between lentils and bean species in terms of their relative abundance, right? So although in terms of, you can say, you can be much more sophisticated, although the relative abundance for lentils is greater than the beans, right? It's, it's nearly 50 versus nearly about 40, right? So there's a relative, ab relative abundance differ, right? Well, lentils are greater than beans, but, but statistically there is no significant difference between relative abundance of those two species according to my analysis, right? So remember I showed you earlier, right, um, in this particular um, example, like which also appears in your lab manual, right? So the, my case is similar to over here, right? They, these two uh, error bars overlap. Your case might be something like this, like they may not overlap, right? So even if they slightly overlap, like you, you, you cannot say they are significantly different, right? Um, if they don't overlap, right, sometimes you might have a bigger gap between the two error bars, right? Sometimes you may have a slight gap between the error bars. In either case, you have no evidence to support. Uh, either case, if they don't overlap, you have evidence to suggest they are significantly different, right? If they, if there's any overlap, then you have to say there's no uh, significant differences between the two relative abundances, right? Okay. See, again, see how important it is to paying attention to these uh, uh, earlier class presentations. And number seven. Compare your results for number six to those of the other teams in your lab section. Do the conclusions of all the other teams agree? Well, you don't work with teams, so I'm going to ask you to completely ignore this particular question, right? Right, so do not worry about the question number seven, ignore it.